Welcome back. A big warning before this next story that Sandy Ronaldo is about to share. Chances are you will be offended. It's about comedy and the fine line between the right of a comic to make a joke and your right to be outraged. This is where adults get hurt on America's Funniest Home Videos. Tyler Morrison leads a double life. <laughs> oh, baby! Family man and dad to his two young daughters. Here, there's $5 for you, and there's $5 for you. You guys did a real good job pretending to like me. <laughs> He's also a comedian. <laughs> I've made a lot of women cry. <laughs> hustling at his craft for the past two decades. Tyler isn't a household name yet, but he's working on it. He lives in Bracebridge, Ontario, two hours north of Toronto. It isn't exactly Comedy Central, but it's close enough for Tyler to hit the open road when opportunity calls. Leaving his family in the rearview mirror, Tyler flips the switch. My brand of humor is like a dark blue collar style of comedy. I make jokes about inappropriate things. Tonight he's taking his brand of dark humor to Yuck Yuck's Comedy Club in Toronto. I think he's really good, Tyler Morgan. He's the headline act. Scout out the crowd, seeing if there's any targets in the front row. Playing to a packed house. You can watch his special on YouTube right now. It's called Too Soon. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the one, the only, Mr. Tyler Morrison, everybody. Got to be inclusive. Uh, one of my friends, uh, she's a lesbian. Uh, God bless her. Uh, he probably won't, but... Uh. Tyler is performing here at a time when the comedy climate has changed. Is the Canadian scene more politically correct now than it was when you first started? Oh, for sure. When I first started in comedy, I definitely found that, like, I could go on stage and be way more reckless with, you know, the content and the material right out of the gate, and the crowds are ready to laugh. Social media has made a difference, offering a vehicle for people to express their outrage. In other words, cancel culture. And Tyler's feeling it. You get more backlash because more people have a voice. You start seeing the audiences almost um, react to comedy differently. I think that they're more guarded. So they come in more guarded to the show, like, I don't know if I should laugh at this. <laughs> I'm even cool with, like, the government paying for reassignment surgeries. I'm all good with that. My only stipulation is this, OK? If you're a woman transitioning to a man, you shouldn't get to select the size of your new penis. <laughs> Just as a taxpayer and as a man, I don't think I should ever have to pay for another dude to have a bigger d than me. What are you aiming for? I want to get the maximum amount of payoff on a laugh. So the more dangerous the subject, the more tension that gets built. And when you hit the punchline, the surprise, it gets the biggest laugh. Do you as a comic feel a responsibility not to offend? No, I think I feel a responsibility to be interesting and, you know, pushing buttons and making people think about things differently. And the offense is something that people will infer it on their own. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? Being offensive is something most comics don't shy away from. Uh-oh, Richard! <laughs> oh. But there's a dark side. Wow! Like the time when actor Will Smith took out his rage on Chris Rock over what he perceived was an offensive joke about his wife's baldness. Rock hit back on his new Netflix special. Gotta watch what you say, cause words hurt. You know, anybody that says words hurt has never been punched in the face. Make some noise for hip hop history. And in May 2022, Dave Chappelle was tackled by a heckler who claims to have been triggered by jokes about the transgender community. 
You know who hates me the most? The transgender community. Jokes like this that many find degrading. They're born feeling like there's something other than they're born as, and that's... That's kind of funny, you know? I... Oh, they want to use our toilets. Why shouldn't they use your toilets? Ricky Gervais faced similar criticism most recently over his Netflix comedy special, Supernature. What about this person isn't a lady? Well, his penis. <laughs> Her penis, you <laughs> bigot. LGBTQ rights group GLAD tweeted that the special is full of dangerous anti-trans rants. So dumb, so dumb. <laughs> because he's not as famous, Tyler Morrison hasn't come up against that level of backlash, but his jokes can certainly be offensive. And we don't have Uber where I live. We just got a fat chick that doesn't drink. <laughs> Call her Uber XL. <laughs> Sometimes we go by her other nickname, Uber Eats. Uh... Have you ever had an audience walk out on you, people walk out on you, because they didn't like oh, your yeah. style, your material? So many. Um... Really? <laughs> so many. Yeah, I've had a few. Tyler's material follows a tradition of what's known as edgy comedy. And they're the only words that seem to have that restriction. I mean... In the 70s, George Carlin shocked audiences when he famously joked about the seven words you can never say on television. You have to say them to find out which ones they are. <laughs> and Eddie Murphy's comedy routine in the 80s about homosexuality sounds offensive today. And one night they could be in the club having fun with their gay friend and give him a little kiss and go home with their AIDS on their lips. <laughs> go home with their husband and like five years later, Mr. Johnson, you have AIDS. He goes, AIDS? But I'm not a homosexual. Sure, you're not a homosexual. People wanting to restrict what people do on stage in comedy is not a new thing. But what they want to restrict has changed over the years. <laughs> Mark Breslin founded Yuck Yuck's chain of comedy clubs back in 1976. I'm a bit confused as to what's happening with guests, the guest spots tonight. Breslin says the criteria for what's considered offensive has shifted. Take me back to that time. If we talk about contentious issues, what would have pushed the envelope? When we first started, the big problem for people was dealing with all these four-letter words and four-letter ideas. But then about 10 years later, 15 years later, there was a lot of issues surrounding the treatment of women on stage. And then about 15 years later after that, that's when political correctness started to rear its, its head. So you're saying the bar has changed, right? If it was four-letter words 50 years ago, now it's offending a particular minority. Well, there's two flashpoints. The flashpoints are race and sex, or race and gender. But I think that anything you want to talk about is fair game. Really? Anything. Breslin has always refused to censor the comedians who perform at his clubs. So basically, freedom of expression. You believe that anything can be said on the stage. No holds barred. Yes, but I also think people have the obligation to walk out, to not come back, to disagree. Well, can a joke go too far, though? Only if people don't laugh. So why do you think there's this pushback now, uh, criticism of people going too far with their comedy? Well, I don't know. I think the people who are really concerned about social justice as the most important thing in life are a minority. If somebody gets offended, well, you know, what are people made of glass? Almost everybody who gets into comedy, they're not hateful people. They're actually people who want to be loved, um, want to be loved in a very intense way. Every 30 seconds, they want to laugh, and every time the audience laughs, it's like saying, we love you, we love you, we love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And at places like Mark Breslin's Yuck Yucks, where anything goes, comic Tyler Morrison, who also wants to be loved by the audience, is adjusting his routine. That's why I love Toronto. I always get a brown cab driver. It's the best. Yeah, they drive dangerous as shit too. But at least if we get into an accident, I know I've got a doctor in the car with me. So it's my job to get better at comedy so I can break their guard down 
get them to relax and loosen up. Nothing's off limits, but go with me and come on this, this comic journey. And what do you say to those who feel upset? Lighten up, because the intention of comedy is not to ruin you or, or outcast you. The laughter is a collectiveness, and that's the, the goal of the comic is, hey, we're, we're not all that different. You want to bring it, bring it together. Thank you for coming out to Yuck Yucks and supporting Canadian comedy. Coming up. It's a lot of juice. <laughs> Pushing the boundaries of comedy's limits. This is a little kooky that we're getting offended by everything. When W5 continues. Russell Peters is comedy royalty. Few rival the 52-year-old Toronto-born, Brampton, Ontario raised comic for his observational and edgy humor. Oh my God, Megan, I just got my results back. It turns out I'm 0 .0000, 0 0.0000.2% Sub-Saharan African. He's not afraid to tackle touchy subjects. Megan, I'm black. <laughs> it's a whole new world for me, Megan. I'm afraid of the police. My credit just took a sh <laughs> I think I'm pregnant. Peter's jokes about race and ethnicity date back to his earliest material. Chinaman! <laughs> he got two chapsticks on his shirt. Shooting noodles out of his wrist. Catching bad guys with stale fortune cookies. <laughs> Confucius say, you go to jail, bad boy. That uncanny ability to mimic accents and his riffs on cultural stereotypes have spared no group, least of all, his own Indo-Canadian heritage, even his dad. Oi, Russell. Somebody gonna get hurt real bad. Russell Peter Stick has made him, after more than 30 years in the business, one of the most successful comedians in the world. It's why W5 went to Los Angeles, the comedy hotspot where Peters and other Canadians have plied their trade. It's a city he now calls home. Russell, do you want to give us a sync clap? Listen, I haven't given anybody the clap in over 25 years. <laughs> Let me know when. You ready? Girl. Oh. And uh, whatever this take is. <laughs> Who better to ask about political correctness than Russell Peters? Someone described you as an equal opportunity offender. Would that you is, say that's accurate? I'd say that's accurate because, you know, at this point in my career, I'm not doing as much of that. And it has nothing to do with cancel culture. It just has to do with I'm getting bored of it. A lot has changed over 30 years in terms of comedy. Oh, yeah. What would you say has been the biggest change over those years? I mean, I look back and I think about things. I, I often talk about this with my friends. And I'm like, wow, I can't believe I said that in complete clear conscience, you know? And really, like, you're just like, wow. I well, guess I thought it was funny at the time, but at the time it was funny, you know? It was, it was daring, it was, wow, did he just say that? Um, you're all, but your job is to push the envelope. Yeah. And then you understand that the envelope keeps moving away, so you're always constantly chasing the envelope. So you're constantly chasing the line. Okay, example? We used to make gay jokes freely. And we wouldn't just say gay, we would say Fuck it. And it was perfectly normal back then and perfectly acceptable. So any regrets, anything that's come out of your mouth that you'd like to pull back? Uh, no. The words are irrelevant. Everything is about intent. There's three ways to tell people to go f themselves, you know? And if I say, Sandy, go f yourself, you're like, oh, Russell. If I was like, Sandy, go f yourself, you'd be like, whoa, what the f Russell? Yeah, yeah it's, it's in it's, your tone. Right? Exactly. Listen, there's times where I, I'll admit when I'm, like, I've, sometimes I'll do when I'm in my set, I'll make fun of somebody and I'll be like, Wow, I crossed the line there. Sorry about that, pal. You know, whatever the deal is, but that's just how it goes. You know, we're 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 free thinkers. You can the minute you try to put uh, reins on our brains, you you ruin the game. This way of free thinking cuts to the core of recent controversies involving other comedians like Dave Chappelle in the hot seat for jokes about trans people and on Saturday Night Live, the Jewish community. I've been in Hollywood. This was just what I saw. 
It's a lot of juice. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> but that didn't mean anything. You know what I mean? There's a lot of black people in Ferguson, Missouri. That didn't even run the place. <laughs> I hope they don't take anything away from me. <laughs> Whoever they are. Comedian Sarah Silverman, who is Jewish and known for her own brand of offensive humor, raged against Chappelle on her podcast. And there were a bunch of Jewish jokes in there that were f***ing hilarious. But that's what made the anti-Semitism in it so scary. What I got from Dave's monologue now is, all right, anything goes. We're back, baby. We're back to anything goes. And if anyone has a problem with it, with our art, with our truth telling, you can blame the Jews. <laughs> what about the criticism that comics are normalizing stereotypes? And uh, Yeah, we've been doing this from the beginning of time. If you and look at old okay. comedy, it's always been about stereotypes. And the stereotype comes from somewhere. Yeah. The stereotype is from, from somewhere real. And the comedian's job is to inflate it to the point where it's, where it's comedic. Uh, we don't come up with the stereotypes, we just, we magnify them. So what about cancel culture? Has that affected in any way no. what you do or say? Nothing whatsoever. Nah, I mean, it, it could, but I think you change with the times the same way I'm not the same guy I was 30 years ago. I mean, you, uh, I'm not the same guy I was 10 years ago. So you, you, you're constantly evolving. You know, I've, I've dealt with real racism in Canada. In the 70s and 80s, it was not a fun place to be for an Indian kid. And as much as we, I, I would celebrate Canada, I, you know, I had a horrible childhood when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when people try to bully me now, like you said this and you said that, I go, f you. First of all, stop trying to act like I'm bullying somebody when I know what real bullying looks like. We're bullying people into doing things that we want them to do or thinking the way we want them to think. That's not the way you get it done. But for some reason, the bully is being celebrated right now. Yeah. This is a little kooky that we're getting offended by everything. But being offensive and offending is a reality facing not just Russell Peters, but a whole new generation of comics. I work uh, pumping bananas. Meet Sam. Uh, some people say that I remind them of Ellen. Sarah. Are you discriminating against my sweet dirty? Fatma. Oh my god, of course I'd love to. And Lewis. The four are students in the comedy program at Toronto's Humber College. Today, they're being critiqued by their instructor, Martha Chavez, and Andrew Clark, who heads up the program. Stand up. The first 400 times are hard, and then it gets easier. Oh. For these students, the new comedy culture is always top of mind. Has political correctness affected what's happening in the classroom? 100%. Sometimes we're working on jokes with our friends, and it's always about what we should or shouldn't say. How important is it for comics to be empathetic or sympathetic to minorities? Very important. I think that they need to consider everyone's perspective and everyone's point of view. Generally, we are all kind of aware. And yeah. like you have to kind of run through, does this have the potential to offend? Something we talk about a lot is about punching up, so not making a joke about a group that has less power than you. I am a transgender person. I'm a transgender man. Being empathetic and not punching down, something that Lewis Brady has had to confront and navigate. Um, when I was really little, my dad would sing me the song, you know, You Are My Sunshine. And I think I was like selective hearing and I just kept hearing like, you are my son. And I was like, I got that. I can do that, dad. I got that for you. What about Ricky Gervais, Dave Chappelle, who have very clearly taken on the trans community. Are you offended by their comedy? I think in, in some ways that they could work on being a little bit more sensitive towards the trans community instead of sort of just like brushing it off and saying, well, it's a joke and it doesn't really matter. So they could be a little bit more sensitive. Okay, can you cross the line, Sarah? Is there yeah. a line that shouldn't be crossed in comedy? A bit of a line for me is like, why are these comedians talking about the trans experience? Because I don't, I don't know that perspective and I, I, that to me is potentially could be punching down. And I think then you quickly will be sort of potentially bullying a group because you don't understand what their perspective is. These millennials and Gen Zs, I know you're here somewhere. 
calm down. You're part of the problem. And perspective is what it's all about. Just ask Russell Peters, who grew up being bullied. Today, the master comic will tell you it's really just all about the joke. This generation is so sensitive. They get so offended by everything. But that's our generation's fault, because our generation started political correctness. But here's what young people don't understand. We started political correctness out of necessity. We didn't do it because we were bored. We didn't do it because we thought it was a good idea. We did it because our parents' generation was insane. <laughs> and we got to find the funny. That's our coping mechanism. When somebody dies, I don't cry anymore. I don't get upset. If when I die, I want to be roasted. I don't mean cremated. I want people to roast me while my casket's sitting there. I want you to, I want that. I want that to be my legacy. I don't want it to be sad and somber. Yeah, you want people to laugh. Yeah. It's all, for me, it's all about laughter. Our only goal on stage is to make you laugh. Sometimes to make you think, but most of the time to make you laugh. That's all, that's what we want to do. And good night. Thank you. Despite all the criticism of Dave Chappelle, his Netflix special, The Closer, won a Grammy for Best Comedy Album in 2023.